Happy Sunday, family. God bless you. We are going through a fruitful series. You ever go through a season or year after year, but it's not really bearing the fruit that you're looking to bear. And I believe it really starts with faith. So faith is what starts this, but I don't want to just have faith in Christ, faith in Jesus, faith in God. I want to be able to bear fruit for the Lord. So as we go through this series of really breaking down how to be fruitful, because it's not just going to be a replay of 2018, the Lord gave me a vision, the Lord had a word for me, but then am I really bearing fruit? I don't want the replay of 2018, 2019, 20, going into 2021, 2022. I want to bear fruit. Who wants to be fruitful? You guys can comment fruitful below comment i want to be fruitful in jesus name and i don't want just to bear any type of fruit because i can bear bad fruit you know john 15 talks about how what the lord does he is the true vine jesus is the true vine and what he does is he cuts off those branches right and he tosses them out those that don't abide in him there must be a pruning and we're going to go through this series on how to truly do this because we might have been planting some seeds. But Lord, I'm waiting for some fruit. I want some fruit, God, all for your glory. I want to bear fruit so that he be glorified. In John 15, it talks about how when we bear fruit, the Father be glorified. So I'm going to open up that I don't need to just be faithful. I also want to be fruitful. Today's message, faithful and fruitful. How can I be fruitful with my faith? Because faith is the start. Faith is the beginning of it. But Because once you have faith in the Lord, it's not flesh and blood that reveals this to us. It's our Father that is up in heaven. So I get the revelation, but Lord, show me the implementation so that I can really walk in true transformation. And this is the fruitfulness that God has promised us. I'm excited. And as we go in, I really thought about this verse in John chapter 11. John chapter 11, as we get this series of uh, the sermon pretty much started off on opening up fruitful because I believe it's not a brand new year that's going to change us. Only Jesus can change us. You could have teared out the calendar and it's a brand new month, brand new year. I get it. That's great. It's great to be excited. And it's also a great time to say, Lord, I'm willing to rededicate my life to you. God, I want to rededicate my walk with you, Father, because you could have got slain on the altar, received Jesus five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, but there's no fruit that was bared. And now I want to get deeper with God. And sometimes it's not a personal issue that I'm going through because you're like, RC, I've been through deliverance. I've been going through all this. I've been released, but how come nothing has changed? It might not just be a personal issue. It might be a priority issue. You got to prioritize God, put God first, and you'll never be last. Watch the Lord move during a time as this. I want to go into John chapter 11 as we open up into the word and we talk about faithful and fruitful. And what I'm going to share are four keys to make sure that this year will be the best year, that every year moving forward will just be greater because the garden that I'm growing is bearing much fruit. And I'm talking about fruit that glorifies God. As John 15, not glorifies myself, it glorifies him. John 3.30, as I decrease, he must increase. John 11, we're going to talk a little bit about Lazarus, but there was an act of obedience, and I pray that we really receive this revelation of what that obedience took for them to allow Lazarus to be raised from the dead. We do our part, and God does his part. We do what's impossible, right, because of God. And we also do what is possible through our obedience and God who specializes in the impossible. We serve a God that does the impossible. And here's the thing. If it cannot be done, God can't do it. In fact, I thought about this. There's probably only one thing that God cannot do. He can't fail. But I serve the God that can resurrect that can heal, that can deliver, that can restore, that can rebuild. 
That's the God that we serve. A God full of miracles, signs, wonders. And this is what Jesus does when he steps into the scene. I just want to open up in John 11 verse 25. As Jesus is sharing this to Martha. And he says this. Jesus said to her. John eleven twenty five, 25. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me. Though he may die. He shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me. Shall never die. Do you believe this? See Jesus is like. Do you believe this Martha. That I am the resurrection and the life. You're speaking to it. Yes, I know Lazarus has died, but you're speaking to the life and the resurrection. Can you believe that God can do this in your life, that he can resurrect things that you thought the enemy put to death? Jesus died so that we may live. That when we put to old the past, put, put to death, we bury the past and the old man and we rise up a new creature in Christ. I don't need a new calendar year to change me. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. And in verse 27, Martha replies and says, she said to Jesus, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God who is to come into the world. So we got to understand that we need our faith in who? Faith in Christ. Hebrews chapter 11, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God without faith. Now I'm going to skip over to verse 38 and there's an act of obedience that we need to learn so as a follower of jesus we get the revelation i put my faith in christ i press in i say lord i love you i honor you i, I i'm seeking you god i'm pressing in into his presence and i'm receiving revelation as god wills god is not forceful right i want to bear fruit but it doesn't come through my own flesh to force him sometimes i i pray and I just be still and know that he is God. I pray and I allow the sounds of heaven to reveal what it needs to reveal as God leads and as God re reveals. That's what revelation is, a revealed message from God. And he says this in verse 38, John eleven thirty-eight. 38. Then Jesus said, again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the tomb. So now I have faith in God. But how can I make sure that this resurrection of Lazarus bears fruit? That gap from revelation, right, to being able to receive the true transformation, that gap is implementation. That gap is obedience. And Jesus gives us that first command. Take away the stone. What does Martha say? Martha, Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there's a stench for he has been dead for four days. You see how sometimes we just speak the circumstance on what's going on when Jesus is already in the midst trying to get a resurrection going on in our life, a resurrection in your finances, a resurrection in your marriage, a resurrection in your fire for revival to stir up in God. Revival first starts within before it can come without we're asking god for revival but you need to be on fire for the lord you need to rekindle that rededication to god say lord i dedicate my life i surrender it all to you that surrender is an act of also obedience to christ martha has to surrender the current circumstance so god can actually move in the promise of what he has for this moment it's deeper than what we can see Ask, think, or imagine, but God can do it. Verse 40, Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? See, no matter what we're going through, I need to have faith in God. Hebrews 11, remember, eleven six. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But he is a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. Verse 41, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me, but it is because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out of outbound hand and foot with the grave cloths, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to him, Loose him 
and let him go. See, what they had to do was move the stone. Jesus wanted to see. Jesus could have done it all, by the way. He has all the power in his hands. He could have moved the stone, raised Lazarus from the dead, and he could have loosed him when he was bound up. But he gave the commandment. I can only imagine Lazarus when he's like, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus is just coming out of the cave, right? He's coming out of the tomb. And he, he gives them another commandment. Hey, loose him and let him go. Jesus could have done that. He could have just snapped his finger. That's this is the power of the God that we serve. But there is an act of obedience that allows us to bear fruit. That's why the Bible tells us to walk by what? Faith. Faithfulness is where it starts. But my obedience is what leads to fruitfulness. I pray you guys really receive this revelation because when I can actually get up, I always like to say, get on your knees and pray, but get on your feet and work. You can't just look at the seed and pray. You could keep praying and praying and praying for the seed to bear fruit, but until you get up and take that seed and plant it into good soil and water it and, and just be patient, let the times and seasons, we serve a God of times and seasons, let the times and seasons do the miracle. I can't control the sunshine and the rain and the miracle of the seed and the soil. What I can control is to take the seed what I can control is to move the tomb as God has given me the commandments. What I can control is loosen him once the resurrection comes and resurrects Lazarus right from the dead. When God does his miracle, I say, Lord, what is it? What's the next step? How can I obey? This is the God that I serve. I don't serve a God where I just rub the, I, I rub it and say, Jehovah genie, here are my three wishes. No, I say, Lord, I don't live above his word. I live below his word. I heed to the voice of God. I I heed to his commandments. I am a faithful servant. He says, well done, my beloved and faithful servant. Jesus didn't come here to be served. He came to serve. This is the type of faith we need, but we need an act of obedience so that fruitfulness for the seasons to come. I want you to bear fruit in everything, your relationships, your marriage, your businesses, your bank account everything all around in your mind. I want your mind to be renewed. I want you to be fruitful in the way that you think. I want you to be fruitful in all that you do. Yes, there needs to be some deliverance. There needs to be some spiritual warfare when the enemy is attacking. There needs to be some prayer to continuously intercede. There needs to be some humility to say that as I decrease, he must increase. God, let it be not be my way, but thy way. It's either my way or Yahweh. Let it be his ways that are greater than our ways, his plans that are greater than our plans. Because as the heavens are higher than the earth, his ways are higher than ours. Obedience. I'm going to give you guys four keys as we are sharing and pretty much opening up this series of fruitfulness. I'm going to give you all four keys on how to truly be fruitful. I don't want you to just be faithful another year. Faith is the start of it. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith is the start, but fruitfulness, fruitfulness is what I, I desire. I want to be able to grow that garden that bears fruit for generations ahead. Four keys, and then I'm going to go over a couple verses, really just giving y'all how these keys can be ineffective so you guys have some verses to meditate on. Four keys. Number one is humility need to be humble. Number two, repentance. Number three, wisdom. And number four, proper planning. Planning ahead. How can I plan ahead? So let me just share this as we close out. I'm going to share a couple verses. Number one is humility. Humility. Humble. Those that humble themselves will be exalted, but those that exalt themselves, they will be humble. The Bible is clear over and over and over again about the humility. There's something powerful about being humble. Humble before God. Humble in all that we do. I pray that you walk in that humility and that you allow the Lord of glory to really soften your heart, renew your mind, and allow you to be a servant so that it's not about self, it's about glorifying God. The Father. It's about glorifying Jesus in my life. You know what it says that 
as his name be lifted up. The word of God says, as his name be lifted up, as the name of Jesus be lifted up, more people will come onto the kingdom. I pray that you are humble, walking by faith, walking so that fruit may bear through your act of obedience and your love for God. I once heard that you might be the only Bible, walking Bible that people read, see, and experience. And let your humility do the talking. Amen. Number two, as we talk about this, number two is repent, repentance. Okay. Second Chronicles 7.14, it says, if my people who call me by my name, this is God speaking, if my people who call me by my name will just pray, humble themselves, seek my face, turn away from their wicked ways, then I will hear them and heal all their land. There's something about that repentance of turning away from your wicked ways, changing your mind. That's all that repentance is, is a change of mind. Metanoia is where it comes from the Greek. Metanoia, a changed mind, a true transformed and changed mind. And not just a mind that's changing, but also saying, I'm not going back to those wicked ways that aren't approved by God. The Holy Spirit will convict you to say that is wrong. That is not of the Lord. That's why we need the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth, our counselor, our guide, our revelator. Repentance, y'all. Matthew chapter 3, verse 7 to 9, it says this, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, this is John the Baptist, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not think to say to yourself, We have Abraham or or our father, for I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. He shares this, and I'm, I'm going to be able to share this in verse 8. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. So you want to bear fruit through your repentance that are worthy through your repentance. This is bearing fruit. We're talking about fruitfulness here. Repentance is key to living a lifestyle that will truly bear fruit for the kingdom. Your heart's going to change. The way that you see things, the where, where you want to serve, your desires, a lot of these things will change. God is faithful, y'all. God is so faithful. Number three is wisdom. Now, when we talk about wisdom, okay, because we're talking about how to bear fruit, wisdom, all that it really is in its core is knowledge applied. It's not just knowing, but it's doing from what I know. You know, uh, Jesus talks about this in the book of Matthew. He says, don't be like a foolish person that builds their house on a sand that hears these sayings but does nothing. But be like the wise one that builds her house on a rock that hears these sayings and does them. Praise the mighty Lord. Wisdom is applied knowledge. This is the wisdom of God. It says in Proverbs 1, and we could talk a whole series on just wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 1 Verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs chapter 3, and it's verse, let's see. I mean, Proverbs chapter 3, I'm looking at it all. It's all good. Proverbs chapter 3, verse uh, 15, and she is referred to wisdom. It says, she is more precious than rubies. And all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Everything you desire doesn't compare to the wisdom of God. We're talking about the wisdom of God. Not the wisdom of this age that is coming to nothing, is what it says in Corinthians. But the wisdom that comes directly from the Lord. Biblical wisdom. Aligning from the heavens. And again, wisdom is just knowledge applied. Applying the knowledge that I obtained from his word, through his, through the spirit of God, from the word of God. Confirmation coming wisdom. I, I need the wisdom of the father in everything that I do. I need wisdom, y'all. I've searched the world and none of it can fill me. But when I find the wisdom from the Lord, it protects me. This word, the Bible is not a rule book. It's not here to punish us. It's here to protect us. That's walking in God's wisdom. Walking in the narrow path, not the broad and wide path, the narrow path. 
that leads to life. Not the broad and wide path that leads to what? Destruction, not that path. This word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Psalm 119. And his word is a seed. It is a seed. This is where we get the wisdom from. It is a seed. And that seed needs to plant into our mind, plant into our soul, our heart. We need that those seeds, those good seeds, that good soil that bears fruitfulness for your life. You want to live life here? It, it says on, on earth as it is in heaven. You want to be able to experience the touchdown to heaven? You can experience it by being in God's will. The most dangerous place to be is in the will of you. But the most safest place to be is in the will of God. God's will is found in God's word. And this is where his wisdom is. Amen. And if you guys didn't know, the Holy Spirit is our guide, our teacher. Okay, the spirit of truth. Once we receive Jesus, we put our faith in the Lord. We receive his spirit, the Holy Spirit. That leads us, that guides us. Full of wisdom and truth. You have that spirit. It starts with faithfulness. But I don't want to just be faithful in him. And I don't want to just be in church. I want to be the church. And that's where fruit bears in your life. <laughs> Number four, the last thing is planning ahead. Proper planning. Now, it might not always go. Don't, don't get this confused with you thinking it's just going to always go according to the plan that you put. Proverbs 19.21, while, while we're in the book of Proverbs, it says, there are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, it is the Lord's counsel that will stand. So I got to be able to discern if this is God's plan or my plan. And if the plans that you planned ahead doesn't go according to plan, just trust in him. And that's why you have to be led by, by the spirit of God. Sometimes you got to just let go of these things. You got to let go. And when I think about all this, I think about a few things in order for me to up the ante. And when I say that, it's like, how can I know? How can I up my discernment to know? Sometimes I just got to let go and let God. I've planned it. I've prayed about it. And you always have to pray before you plan. Prayer, planning, preparation. This is like the, the straight line when you come down. So planning ahead. But I don't want it to just be my plans, my ways. I want it to be Yahweh. His way. This is how you're going to be able to bear fruit. And I'll tell you, there's days where I plan my days, but God will whew, just trust in me. You know, he'll, he'll do the detour. Just trust in the Lord. Trust in God. Trust what he's got for you. Trust that his plans are greater than your plans. And that if he shuts a door, it wasn't for rejection. It was protection. And sometimes God will reveal himself in those circumstances. And this is why we got to pray prayers like, Father, Allow me to be sensitive to your voice. Allow me to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Welcome to Being Fruitful. This is the Fruitful series, y'all. Today we talk about it, faithful and fruitful. They were faithful in Jesus. Martha was faithful. She believed. But could she be fruitful through her obedience of opening up the tomb and taking and loosen off Lazarus once Jesus comes in. Because here's the thing. We do our part. Jesus could have done the whole process, but he wanted to see. And he said this death was not onto, you know, just anything. It was to really glorify the Father. It was to glorify God. We do our part. God does his part. Did you know that worship is your act of obedience to God. It's a whole nother thing. We did a, a talk on how to truly worship God. You guys can check that out on the BFB channel. How to truly worship God through it all. So I pray that your faithfulness will lead to fruitfulness. The last four, these four keys, just to recap. Humility, repentance, wisdom, seek wisdom. Last thing, number three. Or right, number four is planning ahead. Planning ahead. I pray that you just bear fruit. Father, we just thank you for today. And I just pray, God, that you would just touch every heart, every soul today. I pray, God, that we would bear fruit that are worthy of repentance, that we would bear much fruit, God, because you are the true vine, us as the branches, and we want to be connected to you. 
Father, I just break off any toxic relationships, toxic ties, toxic environments, God. Allow us to be in, in atmospheres that would, uh, that would shift because of our obedience. Places, God, that allows us to bear much fruit. I pray, God, that you would lead us and guide us through it all. That you would show us how to truly move during this season, Father. That as we wake up every day, we give glory and thanks for you. We give you our first fruits, our, our time, our attention, our focus, Father. And you would just lead us and guide our footsteps every day, all throughout the day, God. Thank you for all you do in our lives, oh God. And I just pray that this may bless those that hear it and only those that are meant to hear it, God. Let heavenly seeds be planted onto their thoughts, their minds, their souls. But also, God, we pray that you would uproot every demonic seed that might have been planted in our lives. That you would not just uproot it, but you would destroy it in Jesus' name. Any heaviness be lifted off, any anxiety, any overthinking, it all be lifted off in your mighty name, O God. And that we may continue to do your work and labor for your glory as servants for you, Lord. There is no name above your name. His name is Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone's minds, thoughts, and everything that they're doing, God. That they may have the wisdom and strength to cut off things that are not of you. And also to get into new circles, environments, relationships that you have ordained in our life. Guide us, Father. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want who guides us beside still waters and out by green pastures. That goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. We love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name. Praise God. I love y'all. We'll see you guys in the next few videos in this series. I pray you be blessed. Have a great rest of your Sunday. In Jesus' name. Bye-bye.